One Piece chapter 1016. Overall, a very positively received chapter. I think it's important to have a, a unique circle, right? Because I have people that are casuals, really people that just read the chapters and go about their way. Then I have people that read the chapters, then they go and discuss the chapter in depth with other people. For a lot of the people that casually read One Piece, they're saying, oh, this chapter was all right. For people that read One Piece and you like discussing the chapters in depth, you were drawn to this chapter and you were blown away because you were tying so many different things together. And there are some subtle things in here that I would say people that are a bit more invested invested would enjoy. So I thought that perspective was unique and I kind of felt that in the chapter, right? Where maybe it's not as hype as other people would think, but when you look a bit closer, when you squint your eyes a little bit, you see the potential and the value of what transpired here today. But first, I want you guys to see the value in that sub button and click it, please. Click that sub button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Drop a like as well, that certainly helps me out. And without further ado, let's break down this chapter because there's actually a lot to get to. Even if it's not relating directly to the chapter, this chapter could feel like the first set of dominoes to fall and maybe the payoff isn't even in this arc but even beyond right we'll talk about it but let's get to the chapter oda paints a beautiful picture the fire festival we received information about this festival and what it means to the people of wano it's a day that they finally get to exhibit no care just having fun and enjoying their life what's left of it anyway and the backdrop of that is that once this is over they go back to their lives which is not very good right now because kaido and orochi they occupy Wano. So in the midst of the dance and the fun, they're real tears because you wish for the day that this is permanent. Like we can celebrate without knowing in the back of our minds that we will not be able to eat our fill you know, come tomorrow, or some of us will not be here when the next festival comes around. So I think it's very important for Oda to paint that picture to let us know what they're going through. I mean, if you go back and reread some of the chapters, initially when the raid started showing the fire festival and the people reacting to that and how much it matters to them, this initial spread has a bit more impact, right? But you understand the reason behind it. And of course, Oda is setting this up to eventually show impending doom, where Onigashima is heading towards the capital. CP0, while sometimes you may forget that they even exist, you understand their value. Initially, when I read the chapter, I like the fact that they were included because whilst reading, it's really difficult to discern just how much or how many people are falling. How many people do we currently have? How many people do they currently have? Because you break down the numbers to tell a story. To essentially give an update, it's like a score in a basketball game. It's letting you know what the score is, right? Because if the score isn't close, then you're like, okay, this isn't a game that I really want to see. But right now for this game, and I'm using this analogy, it started as a blowout and slowly but surely they're narrowing the gap. So as a viewer, you're anticipating a huge comeback and of course the star player luffy just got injured but you know he's coming back he's in the back getting treatment but we also can't exclude that amazing x factor in tama that came in and completely changed the game and even in this chapter it shows that tama is more than likely going to make another impact and luffy's being aided by his other teammates to kind of keep the score close until he returns because again he is the star player he's the person who has to take down kaido i know i just went down the rabbit hole of a sport analogy but i hope you guys understand what i'm trying to say here cp0 currently are the scorekeepers when will they eventually join the battle we're not sure, but it's going to come at some point. I've seen some people suggest a buster call, which probably could happen. Admittedly, I'm not sure how it would work in regards to logistics because entering Wano is not the typical way, but I suppose they could control the gondola because we know with sword and all these different people that could actually happen. It's something that I don't hate, but CP0, they have a purpose here. We're just not sure exactly what it is yet. I can't help but think about the Grand Fleet and them possibly showing up. It could be a situation where as the numbers dwindle, they get really close to the point that even Kaido is defeated but they're still in such a hole the battle is not over and cp0 foreshadowed that hey all the top guys could fall but you still have to take out all those other people and the grand fleet they could come and they could help take out not only the fodder and the foot soldiers but some of the officers the generals etc very clever where the last chapter was about breaking the spirit of the alliance this chapter was about that backfiring and using some of those instruments that they were using to broadcast this message against them albeit unintentionally nami and usopp uh, when they're together, I think I always expect clever things to happen. So together, they can overcome a bunch of different things because more than any other straw hat, these two, they use their brain. And because physically they can't compete, mentally they have to be a bit better than others. Zeus, the Climatact. It's pretty much explained what happened, right? Hera was about to absorb Zeus, but right before she did it, Zeus's soul went into the Climatact. And for Hera, I believe what happened is that she assumed that sudden boost of power was her absorbing Zeus, but it was basically her receiving those black balls. Uh, so therefore Zeus could get away. And now Nami has an amazing sentient weapon. How does this correspond with Big Mom's powers? One would say, well, if Big Mom's defeated, does 
all of the homies do they go back initially to her i don't think so i think even if big mom is defeated the homies still retain their sentience but i'm interested to see how that plays out because i think this is a permanent power-up and this means so much for nami not only in wano but in the future of the story because nami now has control of not only a, a thundercloud which would amplify her power but he's also sentient before i talk about nami versus ulti i just want to acknowledge or highlight usopp usopp has taken several headbutts while being in onigashima and even after the headbutt he still was not out so usopp even though he's one of the weakest if not the weakest straw hat he has consistently taken some devastating blows and bounced back every single time you would think he has a gomu gomu no me himself but usopp even if sometimes it's unintentional always comes through in the clutch and he aided nami here even though zeus had to play a part in defeating ulti now i've been seeing some criticism in regards to nami versus ulti and i understand it because big mom has been inserted and some would say this was just an exhibition for zeus and for nami to show off her new powers versus ulti because ulti was seemingly already done when you look at the panel previously when ulti got hit with mazer cannon in comparison to when she returned you would assume that she has a gaping hole between her chest it was just a hole in her cape major cannon seems to be a lightning based attack and we saw with lightning based attacks like nami versus the pacifista it can go right through you and not leave any damage but it could mess with your insides let's use gamma knife for instance it has electrical properties that specifically damages your insides so while it does look crazy and initially i'm like ulti should be done pretty much dead the properties of that attack you could assume is more than anything lightning and not a straight up devastating power beam for instance like ikaku sovereignty give ulti her credit though ulti is extremely durable she has taken a lot of damage at onigashima but she keeps bouncing back i do think she's done here because again this was an exhibition this was a way to showcase nami's new abilities and just how devastating nami will be going forward granted this shows that oda does care about power scaling a little bit because he could have easily given nami a power up and have nami defeat ulti of her own accord without including big mom but he understands the optics of ulti where she was able to pin down Luffy to the point that he considered using Gear 4th. And Nami, who is talented as a fighter, she is very clever, but her body is so frail, it wouldn't take much from Ulti to overcome her, even with Zeus and her Klim attack. So I love the way it was handled. And it seems like the Straw Hats are all getting power-ups in this arc that are going to benefit them in the future. We've already seen it from Zoro, Luffy, Nami. Now I'm really interested to see how the other Straw Hats power up, essentially, in this arc. Quickly, though, I know I'm spending a lot of time here, but overall, so this is Nami's last fight, or Nami's one shining moment. Is it satisfying? I gotta say I'm 50-50 on it, right? Because I think the best moment came when she took the headbutts and she refused to say that Luffy will not become Pirate King. I think that's the best moment for me in this whole scenario. But when you go through this entire scenario, yes, it feels a bit goofy because they were running away for so long, but this feels like a fitting end. And I think this is a way for Oda to split the difference where it's like, okay, I give you Nami defeating Ulti, but I weaken her to the point that it makes sense. So I have no issues here. Tama has an announcement to make. More than likely, Tama is going to give orders to the people that, that's eaten Dongo that still have not been converted. So like I mentioned, the tides are going to shift even more. And like I also mentioned, things backfired because Bao Huang did not expect for Ulti to be defeated as well. So she just broadcasted that, hey, Page One and Ulti, they're both defeated. And I think the reactions from the other Flying Six is funny because they're like, oh, damn. They got defeated, which I presumed and I expected for those two to be probably the weakest two. But they reacted like, oh, crap okay unexpected so we should probably take things a bit seriously who's who is sasuke you can't tell with black maria they're no longer in their transformed zone state seems to be a bit beaten up i mean sasuke's fighting frankie and who's who he has his hands full with fat boy jinbei or fat fish jinbei i don't know i love jinbei i don't want people to think i don't and black maria she's fighting brooke and robin we will more than likely see the conclusion to all of these battles but i thought it was interesting that oda chose to highlight their reacting to page one and ulti being defeated the final part of the chapter which i think is very important and there are so many ways this could go but kaido so far he is filled with quotables, right? So in a way, he's reminding me of Thanos. He has so many times where you can just quote different things he said. And it's just like, oh my God, this dude and his speeches, they're fantastic. And Kaido is in the same vein where we still don't have enough backstory, but I could listen to Kaido talk or just dialogue from kaido every single chapter where i think oda is cleverly every time kaido speaks or there's dialogue involving kaido there's something important mentioned it goes all the way back to the beginning of onigashima where kaido talks about momonosuke kaido talks about robin kaido talks about the one piece kaido makes a hint to luffy based on how much he's smiling kaido talks about the voices disappearing kaido's dialogue about advanced conquers hockey kaido and his quotables are top tier and honestly the only person i put above him in regards to quotables is do flamingo and because do flamingo is the go to that kaido is teetering like every single chapter you just look forward to see what kaido is going to say and we're not even at the final battle yet he's fighting yamato wano is special why is wano special at the beginning of the arc the marines pretty much hinted 
that everyone is gathering there for a reason. And then we think about the Void Century and someone like Toki, where her goal, her destination was Wano, even though she's from the Void Century. We know about the Kazuki, the creator of the Poneglyphs, basically closing down Wano, staying there, protecting something, and now it's time for them to open up again. Kaido chose Wano for a reason. The thing is, Kaido is privy to a lot more information than we initially thought. So going back to even his plan with Orochi, it seems all along his goal was to replace Orochi with Yamato. So him going into it, he's like, yeah, I'm going to occupy Wano. And yeah, whatever this Shogun is, whatever, I'll work with him as long as I need to. But the goal is to take over and use Wano as a platform to do whatever I need to do. But Kaido knows there's something significant about Wano. And we all know that because Odin and the mention of Joy Boy, Wano is a key part of that. Like Wano has to be open waiting for Joy Boy. But as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I think it's confirmed that Luffy's Joy Boy and this chapter, I think confirms it even more. Yamato flat out says that Luffy's the one that Odin's waiting for. And when you think of dialogue like that, you can't help but think about where Whitebeard said to Blackbeard, well, you're not the one Roger's waiting for. I mean, though Roger essentially is waiting for Joy Boy. And we'll talk about that another time in regards to the candidates for Joy Boy, because even Roger, I think, tried to create his own Joy Boy. But, you know, conversation for another day. However, I think that's very important. There's always the question of Yamato knowing a bit too much because she read Odin's journal but she's hinted that right that luffy is the chosen one but initially you felt like okay luffy was a chosen one because of how ace talked about him but now yamato's flat out saying no odin was waiting for luffy luffy's essentially joy boy the goal is for yamato to hold off kaido can she do it more than likely does that present issues for power scaling in regards to the dynamic of the crew is that even important i think so because if yamato was able to hold off kaido by himself who went to hybrid immediately by the way if she's able to do that that tells us a lot about her strength i think and also there's the hint that she probably has conquers hockey there's a video coming soon about future Congress hockey users and people that I think will be confirmed in the future. Yamato more than likely will be on that list. So whew, it's a lot. Like I said, when you look at all the dialogue and things that transpired in this chapter, there's so many takeaways. I think Wano being special and where that could go. There are other ways we could take it because when I think of it, I think of just how important Caribou could still be. And you don't have to make a huge leap because Kaido already knows so much. He just needs one minute detail and then it could just bring everything together for him. So guys, give me your thoughts. I know I've said a lot, but this was a very important chapter. That's what it is. It was important. And you could say it was enlightening as well, <laughs> but it's one of those chapters that we needed. And we're probably going to remember this as Wano goes on, especially with the results of how Onigashima turns out. But yeah, give me your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Guys, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. I start doubting me, I felt lost, I rewrite it.